Welcome back, this is Eric. Speaking of the ESP32 camera, it's ESP32 AI Thinker mode usually. I love ESP32 AI Thinker because it's very cheap and can do a lot of fun projects. Although ESP32 AI Thinker is very useful, we can see a lot of noise in the JPEG image obtained from OB2640. When we want to get a higher quality image, we don't have many options. Uh, projects based on Raspberry Pi not only allow much more versatility but also USB based cameras. This is far from what we are trying to do because it's a completely different category of project. How about you using a lens other than OV2640 while using ESP32? Uh, this is Digihero OV5640 because it has a 1 core inch 5 megapixel CMOS image sensor. It's possible to acquire images of up to 2592 by 1944. In today's video, I'm going to connect this OV5640 to the ESP32 AI Thinker board and show you how it works. The most worrying part was that the core voltage is slightly different from the OV2640, but since ESP32 officially supports OV5640, I thought there is no problem. The frame table looks fantastic. It would be great if we could get the full frame rate out of ESP32 environment, but it seems almost impossible. I will remove the OV5640 from the board. I bought a product that came with the board to use later in my Raspberry Pi project. Since it's fixed with double side tape, uh, it was carefully separated not to damage the connector. Uh, put the OV5640 into the 24 pin connector on the existing AI Thinker board. Uh, for information, this OV5640 is a 170 degree fisheye lens. And the focal length is pretty long. I'm wondering what kind of images can be taken. In this way, ESP32 and OV5640 are ready. It looks good. Uh, for quality comparison, OV2640 was also prepared. For OV2640, I attitude this because the 160 degree fisheye lens has the widest angle of view among the OV2640 lenses I have. The red breadboard is for OV5640 and the blue breadboard is for OV2640. Uh, they have ESP32 camera web server example code in Advanced Edge. I think this is probably the first example we try after purchasing the ESP32 camera. Uh, also, the ESP32 world version in the Arduino environment is 2.0.1. Okay, all looks good. Uh, first, let's check the image quality. OV5640 on the left and OV2640 on the right. You can see the title of the ESP32 OV5640 on the top left. This is because the board has detected the OV5640 with VID and PID values. The ESP32 camera example code has been updated, so unlike the previous version, you can directly control the X clock and change the registry right away. That's really cool. Uh, compared to OV2640, you can see more diverse menus on the OV5640 page. It feels like advanced features are activated. Uh, click star stream to check images. A ton of vertical flip as the OV5640 is upside down. If you look closely at the OV2640, you can see the noise. You can still see a little bit of noise in the incoming image. But the image from the OV5640 is very clear without any noises. It's great. OV5640 has more configuration options. In addition, the range of the detailed settings has been expanded. For example, you can adjust brightness from minus 3 to 3 and adjust the exposure level. Additionally, the gain control can be operated manually. Uh, this seems to be useful for special purposes in a space where light is blocked. Uh, ESP32 uses an 80 MHz APB clock and this clock can power the ITS bus and have sampling up to 20 MHz in parallel mode. So X clock can be set up to 20 MHz. Uh, OV5640 allows you to select the maximum resolution of QS XGA 2560x1920. On the other hand, the OV2640 can only select up to its maximum resolution UXJ 1600 by 1200. Uh, let me choose the maximum resolution of OV5640. Unfortunately, my monitor's height is less than 1920, so I can see the full image right away. But the images are really sharp and the quality is really good. The problem is that it takes a lot of time after acquiring a JPEG image to transfer via Wi-Fi. Also, a single 5 megapixel image has a large file size, so it takes more time than the smaller images. Anyway, we will see the speed test later in this video. Other available resolutions are also show great quality. Uh, 
Uh, I will try to select the maximum resolution of OV-640 for both. There is a difference in the angle view and the focal length, so please take this into account. Uh, both are frame size UXGA 1600 by 1200. You can clearly see that there is a noise in the image incoming from the OV-2640. I couldn't see any noise in the OV-5640's images while doing this test. Uh, this test is for the frame per second. It does not output the JPEG image obtained from the lens on the screen or stream it through Wi-Fi. Uh, purely measures the FPS it takes to get a single image buffer. Uh, only PSRAM and ST7789 display are connected to this PCB. The display is simply meant to show the FPS and how many images were taken. OV5640 on the left and OV2640 on the right. The first test at VGA resolution. The OV2640 is faster, it's keeping it at 25 fps. However, the OV5640 is not reaching 25 fps in the same environment. Uh, this time, it's a JPEG image of UXGA, which is the maximum resolution of the OV2640. Here, the difference is even greater. The OV2640 maintains 12 fps, but the OV5640 has a hard time maintaining 5 fps. The conclusion of today's test is like this. I can say the environment I have created is the best. However, OV2640 can do faster FPS than OV5640 in the same environment. Also, if image quality is important, OV5640 seems to be able to satisfy it. Uh, not only do you get 5 megapixel images, but the many options allows you to make advanced settings for your project needs. I think this can be very useful. Personally, I was surprised at how well the OV2640's FPS came out. If image data can be retrieved effectively, it seems that the image can be drawn faster on the connected device. And when the environment where the OV5640 can be used properly is completed, I will test it again. If you have any questions, please comment below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next project.